Prepare to be spellbound as we delve into the chilling true story of Vladimir Markov, a Russian poacher who found himself in the jaws of the most fearsome predator of the frozen taiga forests, the Siberian tiger. This tale of terror, considered one of the deadliest tiger attacks in history, serves as a cautionary tale about the danger lurking in the wilderness. In this harrowing incident, which echoes the horrifying big cat attack on two hunters, we witness the Siberian tiger's immense power and deadly precision firsthand, with razor-sharp teeth capable of tearing off limbs and a vengeful, cunning nature that allows it to stalk and hunt with ease. This creature is not to be underestimated. Join us on this spine-tingling journey as we uncover the shocking details of this blood-curdling event. The predator, also known as the Amur tiger, was once in danger of going extinct, but was saved by conservation efforts and it has since returned to the Primoria province near the Amur River, the largest undammed river in the world. By consuming moose elk and wild boar, the tiger had risen to the top of the food chain. The introduction of human settlements into the tiger forests, however, posed a threat to their survival. Despite the dangers associated with settling among the dangerous predators, poachers saw a chance to make money in the underground markets close to the Chinese border by hunting Siberian tigers and wild boar. This was the only source of income in the post-Soviet economy for some people like Markov. In 1997, after packing his supplies and saying goodbye to his wife, Markov set out on a 50-mile journey with his friend to the frozen Tega forest. The idea was to spend the night in a secluded cabin and start hunting the following day. He began his morning walk with his attack dogs, which followed the footprints of Siberian tigers to find their scent. The temperature was below freezing and there was at least 10 inches of snow on the ground. Markov noticed a trail of footprints that were larger than his handprints as he made his way through the snow layers, through the forest trees, and through the dense undergrowth. Only the powerful Siberian tiger could have left these enormous prints. Markov traveled miles after the animal's tracks in search of a glimpse of it. He was certain that he could make a killing with a shotgun and thus survive in the failing economy. He saw the huge Siberian tiger devouring a wild boar as he peered through the branches of a nearby tree. The beast gave him a quick glance and briefly locked eyes before resuming its meal carelessly. The tiger's rippling muscles demonstrated its ferocious strength, a refusal to give up its prey with each bite. Markov realized he was in a position to take a direct shot. He carefully targeted the tiger's torso with his shotgun before firing. Markov was convinced that the tiger would eventually die from this fatal wound. Markov followed the wounded tiger for several miles through the snow, scavenging meat from the wild boar carcass. Whilst white snow made it easy for him to follow the blood trail, but it got smaller the further it went. The trail eventually disappeared, leaving Markov unsure of the tiger's whereabouts. He decided to head back to his camp and carry on the search the next day after realizing that the tiger might not have sustained a fatal wound. Markov exchanged for some of the other boar meat in town and kept some of it close to his camp. The wounded tiger followed Markov's scent to his cabin while he was gone and found the boar hunt that had been stored outside in the wellhead. Frustrated, the tiger destroyed the wellhead and killed its prey before waiting for Markov to return outside the cabin. Markov returned to the cabin and was greeted by the frantic barking of his dogs alerting him to a problem. The tiger was hiding in the distance when he turned to look outside. Markov called his dogs inside and got ready for battle after realizing the animal was out for retribution. The tiger was wounded after being shot twice, but it still managed to flee into the forest. Markov made the decision to seek safety in his car and with his friend Dungia. They couldn't leave right away because the car needed nightly maintenance. Markov became impatient and went back to his cabin intending to solve the issue on his own. Without his knowledge, the tiger had entered the cabin and destroyed everything that Markov sent on it. Then, it located a covert location to await his return. Markov was approaching the cabin entrance when he was ambushed by a tiger in the pitch blackness. He had no means of defense, and the vengeful Siberian tiger, which had little left over from their previous encounters, was at his mercy. Investigators later came across a disturbing scene outside the camp, that showed the brutal attack and Markov's defenseless condition just before he was sucked dry. Markov struggled as he was being eaten alive, flattening the snow nearby. Markov's body was reduced to a few broken bones and a pool of blood-red snow barely recognizable. 
his clothing was dispersed, his shoes were still on his severed feet, and his sleeves were still on his severed arms. The tiger tore its hunter to pieces before briefly calming down and moving downstream. News of the Siberian tiger, known for attacking and devouring humans, had spread. Poachers and settlers fled the tiger forest out of fear for their lives, leaving only Andrei Petrutnia, a 25-year-old trapper who had set traps there to capture animals for their fur. Andrei went into the forest despite his parents' warnings to stay indoors until the tiger was located. The tiger attacked his cabin while he was away, showing that it would attack anything that smelled like a human. When Andre came back, the tiger, which had been waiting for him behind a neighbor's cabin, caught him off guard. He tried to defend himself with his shotgun, but the cold prevented it from firing. The tiger easily overpowered and killed Andre with little resistance. In order to find his son, Andre's father asked for a search and rescue effort, which was successful. The tiger had been eating Andre for three days prior to his discovery, so all that was left of him with some bloody clothes and burned cross. Unfortunately, a large portion of Andre's remains could not be located for his father to receive them. During that time period, an organization called Project Tiger, which was funded by the West and was devoted to animal conservation, was working to protect the Siberian tiger and put a stop to poaching as well as illegal hunting in the tiger forest. Because of his work as a researcher and conservationist for tigers, Yuri Trush, who was in charge of tracking for this mission, found himself in an ironic situation. The authorities gave him orders to locate and kill the injured tiger that was responsible for Andre's death. He was to carry out those orders. Together with Trush, officers Shidnev and Pianka traced the injured Olympian's tiger's track, which led them to a remote area close to the Shlomenko's cabin. Trush was the only one who knew where Shlomenko's cabin was located. After carefully listening for any movement in the trees, they eventually spotted a slight movement in one of the trees. As the group got closer to the entrance of the cabin, Officer Trush was ambushed by an enormous Siberian tiger, which came out of nowhere and attacked him from behind. The head tracker attempted to shoot the tiger with his gun, but it was already too late. The vicious animal quickly overpowered him and began biting and clawing at his helpless body. In the midst of the chaos, the three individuals fired a number of shots, 11 of which hit the tiger which ultimately led to his demise as a result of the injuries it sustained. After regaining his composure, Officer Trish discovered that the tiger's throat had been partially pierced by the rifle during the course of the assault. The body of the men eating tiger was then brought to the village so that it could be positively identified as the tiger that had been attacking settlers in recent times. Later on, the skin of the animal was removed and put on display in the administrative hub of the region as a sobering reminder of the devastation caused by the man-eating tiger and as a warning about what can occur when a man and beast come into conflict, which tragically resulted in the loss of two lives. And that's the end of our spine-tingling journey into the chilling true story of Vladimir Markov and the deadly encounter with the Siberian tiger. This cautionary tale reminds us of the dangers lurking in the wilderness and the importance of conservation efforts to protect these magnificent creatures. With their immense power and deadly position, the Siberian tiger is not to be underestimated. But despite the danger, these big cats have been made a remarkable recover from the brink of extinction thanks to conservation efforts. We hope this story has left you spellbound and to remind you of the power of nature. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. And we'll see you at the next one.